Hello and welcome to Keenan Keys. Here I have the Yamaha PSS 480. This is a special keyboard to me. Many people say that the sound of a certain keyboard brings back old memories. Well, that's the case for me with this keyboard. It was the very first portable keyboard I've ever played on. A friend of mine lent it to me back in the early 90s. Of course, not exactly this model. I bought this one a few years ago. It's one of the earlier models. Later, Yamaha added Music Station to the labeling, cause that's what it is. And I don't think the manual was exaggerating too much when it called the PSS 480 the most advanced keyboard available at that time. At least when it comes to small portable keyboards. It has 49 keys, 12 note polyphony, 100 FM voices with 5 effects, a digital synthesizer section with 9 editable parameters and 5 user banks, a rhythm machine with 9 PCM samples and a programmable custom drummer, 100 accompaniment styles with fill-ins, ending and mutable accompaniment instruments, a sequencer with 5 melody and 5 chord banks, a headphone jack, MIDI in and out. The accompaniment styles and the demo are transmitted via MIDI. And you can use it as a MIDI controller or as a multi-terminal sound source. I can remember that I wasn't totally convinced by its sound back then. But I immediately loved the accompaniment section, the custom drummer and the sequencer. Because I didn't have anything than a two-track cassette recorder to make recordings. Of course, that changed a bit since then. And nowadays it's also the two operator FM synthesizer that makes it one of my favorite Yamaha keyboards. Cause it's more flexible than you might expect. Yamaha started experimenting with FM synthesis in the 70s. The first synthesizers were the GS1 and 2, released in 1982. But most famous is the DX7 from 1983. They also released more than 40 Porter Sound keyboards with this technology. Starting with the PS6100 in 1984, up to the PSR100 in 1991, plus a few re-releases in 1995. While all these models have slightly different features, they do not sound that much different. Cause they all use similar 2 operator FM sound chips. And as far as I know, the only exceptions are the PSR80, 90 and 6300, which should use the same 4 operator FM chip as the DX11 for example. The PSS 480 was released in 1988. That year marked the peak of the Porter Sound FM keyboards, and maybe the peak of the PSS keyboards in general. The original price was about $200. I paid about 40 euros for it, but they are getting more and more expensive these days. Its predecessors were the PSS 360, 460 and 560 from 1986, respectively the PSS 370, 470 and 570 from 1987, all with a YM3812 sound chip, also known as OPL2, which was also used in Adlib and Sound Blaster sound cards. All have a synthesizer section with sliders. Which is quite handy, cause it allows quicker access to the parameters and to edit more than one at a time. But there are less parameters and you can't store different settings. The PSS 480 has a bigger brother, the PSS 680. Which is basically the same, but it has drum pads, more percussion sounds, pitch bend wheel and stereo chorus. Both models were re-released as the PSS 580 and 780 in 1989. And these models are the only Porter Sound keyboards with this kind of parameter editing. And the only PSS FM keyboards with MIDI, which is in general very rare for PSS keyboards. The last two models with editable synth parameters were the PSS 380 from 1989 and its reissue the PSS 390 from 1990. Both again with sliders and without MIDI interface. The date stamp shows that this unit was produced in July 1988. We see a ROM IC for program, demo and styles and a RAM chip. Both work together with the main IC, which we should see on the other side of the board. These two are LED drivers. And this is the ROM IC for the drums. The 
3220 is the main IC. It combines the FM tone generator, an 8-bit CPU, some ROM and RAM, the MIDI interface and a DAC. The same IC was used for the PSR 16, 36, 41 and the DSR 500. The 3219 is responsible for the drums. It supports stereo panning and up to 63 waveforms. Also used in the PSR 36, 41, 47 and 48 and the DD6. The third IC is a gate array. It runs on 6 C-size batteries or with 10 volt power supply. Positive center. I will connect the stereo cable. All voices are mono, but the drum sounds are panned left and right. First I will try the test mode. Hold down the highest two keys and turn it on. Now a quick ROM and RAM test is performed. After that, the display shows the model number and the ROM version. It's version 2. There are several versions, but I can't say how they differ. You can check if all buttons are working. But that's it. Let's start without accompaniment in normal mode. We have a hundred voices and five effects. Vibrato, sustain, reverb, which is actually another sustain, but shorter and quieter. Portamento, pretty rare among PSS keyboards. And duet, which generates a second voice to your manual performance. It doesn't work in normal mode. The right side of the display shows the voice and style numbers and the left side is for all the other parameters. It currently shows the tempo. It starts with synth brass. The brass sounds are a strength of FM synthesis. Trombone. The woodwind voices are not too bad, but nothing special. Portamento is a nice feature. You can adjust the glide time. Hold down Portamento and change the value. It also works polyphonic. This is violin too. string sounds are not very convincing. The piano sounds more like a guitar. Another strength of FM synthesis are the bell-like sounds, or metallic sounds in general. So e-piano is quite okay. Music box. piano. Tubular bells. Steel drum too. Here we hear a softer sound when the keys press quickly, while synth tom is the opposite. The sound is brighter and longer if the keys press quickly. Try it with portamento. 
Marimba. Harpsichord. The guitar and plucked sounds are not that realistic, but quite nice and useful. This is banjo. Acoustic guitar. and Koto. Synth bass. The bass voices could be better. They are an octave too high, and most of them have a bit too much sustain for my taste. We can transpose it down. But it still sounds as if reverb is turned on. Electric bass. Wood bass 2 is one of my favorites. As well as mute bass. Push plus and minus at the same time to get to the default transpose setting. By the way, this works with all parameters. I have to say that many of the voices still do not totally convince me. A lot of them are too soft or dull. But fortunately, there is a way to change this. So let's have a look at the synthesizer section. You can use it to alter the existing voices or to create totally different sounds. And there's a wide variety of sounds possible, from smooth pads to distorted effects. FM synthesis is often described as very complicated and less predictable. And the larger synthesizers like the DX7 are indeed not that user-friendly when it comes to programming. But the basics are quite simple. FM stands for frequency modulation. Frequency means pitch. And you already know some kind of pitch modulation. Vibrato. It's achieved by modulating one waveform, let's say a sine wave, by another. For vibrato it's usually also a sine wave but at a very low, not audible frequency, let's say 5 Hz. The effect is that the pitch goes slightly up and down. Most synthesizers have a separate low frequency oscillator, an LFO for that, with a maximum frequency of 10 or maybe 20 Hz. But if you use an oscillator that can produce higher frequencies, the vibrato becomes so fast that we can no longer hear it as an effect. Instead, we hear something new. A more complex waveform with lots of overtones, which leads to a different timbre. And that's what's happening inside the PSS480. If we have a look at the little picture on the panel, we see two boxes named Operator 1 and Operator 2. Each operator contains an oscillator with adjustable frequency. They are basically the same, 
The main difference is how they are connected. The professional FM synthesizers have four or six operators, which can be arranged differently. But here we only have the minimum of two, which makes things less flexible, but also much easier. You see that operator two is connected to the speaker. That means that this is the operator we actually hear. It generates the basic waveform that's going to be modulated. In terms of FM, it's called the carrier. Operator 1 is directly connected to operator 2 and modulates its frequency. You can't hear it directly, and it's usually called the modulator. Both operators have a level control. And while the level of operator 2 controls the overall volume, the level of operator 1 determines the amount of modulation. This is the most important parameter. Let's try that out. Voice 99 is a pure sine wave. No frequency modulation is happening. We only hear the carrier. You see modulation level is set to zero. The number to the far left indicates the selected parameter and the two digits next to it show its value. We can adjust the volume and the frequency of operator two. The frequency of both operators is not freely adjustable. These numbers are multiplies. That makes it easier to get musical sounding results. One is the basic frequency. At two it's doubled, at three it's tripled, and so on. Zero halves the frequency. It's actually 0 0.5. However, the display isn't big enough to show it correctly. I will set it to one. Right now, operator one is set to the same frequency. That means we have a frequency ratio of one to one. Turn up the modulation level. You can hear how the sound slowly changes. It gets brighter and more and more overtones are generated. If you now change the frequency of operator one, the overtones change again. They are getting higher and sharper, while the overall pitch stays the same. If you change the frequency of operator two instead, you will get different results. So every ratio produces a different waveform. And it's not always easy to say how a certain ratio sounds. As a rough rule of thumb, we could say the modulator determines the timbre of a sound and the carrier is mainly responsible for the overall volume and the basic pitch. You may have noticed this line around operator one. This represents the feedback parameter. Operator one can not only modulate operator two, it can also modulate itself. It results in even richer overtones. And can lead to noisy or heavily distorted sounds. Each operator contains also an envelope generator with attack and decay represented by the green triangle. The envelope generator of operator 2 controls the overall volume over time. 63 is the fastest attack. And 0 means no attack at all. The values might be a bit irritating, but these are no time parameters. These are rates. And the lower the rate, the slower the attack or decay. 0 decay means infinite sustain. And 63 is the fastest decay. The volume drops to zero immediately after the attack. The envelope generator of operator one controls the amount of modulation over time. And that's basically it. Let's create a sound from scratch. I will start with the sine wave again. Turn up modulation level. Now add feedback. This almost sounds like a sawtooth wave. At a ratio of 2 to 1, it sounds more like a square wave. Let's go back to sawtooth. Make the modulator attack a bit slower and you get a simple brass sound. Change decay a bit. And fine tune the modulation level. Change the ratio to make it a tuba. It's 
not that much different if you lower the carry as well. But it's not as loud. Now change the modulator attack again to make it a bass. Maybe a bit faster decay. Change feedback to make it less bright. And experiment with the frequency ratio. Let's try to use this for a lead voice, with a bit higher modulation level and less feedback. And with Portamento. For a bell-like sound, the modulation frequency needs to be higher than the carrier frequency. Maybe with a lower modulation level. And a bit release. A bit more feedback. If you want to store your new sound, hold down store and press one of the five bank switches. A few more user banks would have been great. The DSR500 can store a hundred user voices. Maybe I will try it out one day. You can get a wide variety of sounds and effects if you simply choose a voice and play around with modulation level, feedback and frequency. High feedback and modulation levels usually make a big difference, but sometimes more subtle changes will do the trick. Listen to the mute trumpet. That doesn't sound like much. Simply change the attack of both envelopes. And turn on portamento. And it sounds a bit like a sync lead. But you will quickly find out that the same settings sound different depending on the preset voice you start with. That's because there are a few more parameters that were used to create the preset voices. We obviously have vibrato, with slightly different settings for each sound. The intensity can vary and some voices have a slight vibrato delay. And some presets have a tremolo effect. Tremolo is similar to vibrato, but instead of modulating pitch, it modulates volume. Wild Trumpet has also a tremolo effect. But not on the carrier, it's on the modulator, and therefore changes the timbre, not the volume. You can hear it clearly when you turn down the modulation level. And Tremolo Guitar has both. The tremolo organ has actually not a tremolo effect. You 
here, the modulation varies depending on the notes you play. It's more like vibrato, but it was done by slightly detuning the carrier and modulator wave. Samba whistle is also interesting, because it uses the same effect in combination with tremolo on the modulator. You can use it for many kinds of effects if you turn up the modulation level. Add a little bit of feedback and experiment with frequency. A slow attack could be nice. And no decay for the carrier. A few voices are very clearly out of tune. Listen to timpani. Or steel drum. With pan flute it's a bit more subtle. I increased the modulation level so you can hear it. You can also hear a sharp attack that shouldn't be there. Now with the slowest attack. The modulation level drops immediately after the attack, but not to zero. It stays at a certain level. That tells us that the envelope has to be more complex. And in fact it has five parameters. Attack, decay 1, sustain level, decay 2 and release. Quite similar to the one you might know from the Casio VL1. The decay parameter we have access to on the panel is decay 2. Right now the envelope looks like this. A slow attack, a fast decay 1 and a medium sustain level. Decay 2 is set to 0, so we have infinite sustain. And there is another interesting thing. The rates change depending on the notes you play. Higher notes have a faster envelope than lower notes. And in combination with a slow modulator attack, you can use this to create three voices in one. A simple sine wave sound if you release the keys quickly. A slowly growing sound if you hold down the lower keys. And a sharp sound with the highest keys. The last thing to mention is that both oscillators can produce four different kinds of waveforms. Pan flute is not based on a pure sine wave, as you can hear when I turn down the modulation level. Now the sine wave again. And these are the other two. They sound similar, but they lead to slightly different results. So there's a lot more to explore with all the different preset voices.
tweaked a few of the hidden parameters, cause there is an easy way to do this, but more on that in one of my next videos. I really wanted to put everything in a single video, but it turned out to be way too long and I didn't want to cut out too much, cause this is one of my favorite portable keyboards and it deserves a bit more time. So in my next video, I will show you all the other features, the accompaniment, which is really great, the sequencer and the MIDI functions. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching. Thank you.